like a woman in travail. Don't be fooled. This morning, I want to talk to you about destroying the veil. Someone say, destroying the veil. Come with me to Genesis chapter 13, reading from verse 14 to 17. Genesis 13, 14 to 17. Genesis 13, 14 to 17. Yes. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was separated from him. Please underline the word lot and write be underneath lot in your, in your book or in your Bible. Lot means a veil. The word lot means a veil. A veil. Go ahead. The word lot means a veil. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art not Look worth. from where you have always been. Not from somewhere else. From where you are. A group of men of God were talking to me the other day and they said that some men of God in town, they were eating and they were talking about action. And they said that action seems to be like a transgenerational church. Like a church that was started long time ago and it's like it's been handed over different, different, different leadership and it's still moving on. And they were saying that action seems to be a church that is very advanced because everything does not depend on just the archbishop it's like you have fivefold ministries in action which is what is required for every church to do well the office of an apostle the prophet the teacher the evangelist and the apostle all these fivefold ministries are necessary mandatory required to be able to run a church effectively according to bible protocol and procedures and in this house everything doesn't depend on me that's why you have people like Osofo ministering every Sunday when I'm not here. And wherever I am in the world, I'm in touch with him. We talk about his scriptures, everything, and I watch you live like others are watching me live right now. All over the world, in Australia and America, we are streaming live. And I watch all your services and watch who is in church, who is not in church. I know everything. I can see you online just as others are seeing me right now. Amen. I see everything. Are you hearing me, somebody? But the, the, what I'm trying to establish is that this church is not just Archbishop Duncan Williams. We have trained five full ministry gifts so that whether I'm in town or not, the church is still moving because we've come to a place when it's not about people don't come to church to hear Archbishop Duncan Williams. They come to church to hear the word of God. I didn't hear you. I said they come to church to hear the word of God. Because in the beginning was Archbishop Duncan Williams. And Archbishop Duncan Williams was in the beginning. And in the beginning was Archbishop Duncan Williams. But in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word, be come on somebody, talk to me. And the word was God. So I want to thank God that in this house, people don't come to church to hear Archbishop Duncan Williams. They come to church here to hear the word of God. Because the word of God is here. Somebody put your hands together and give God praise. And my job is to coach people and train people so that whether I'm in town or not, that allows me to do what I have to do for God and go to the nation. So whether I'm in town or not, the word of God is still preached because it has to be about the word of God and not about personality. And they were saying that Action is a very blessed church because they've been able to transit from a personality to the word of God. But they were saying that in other charismatic churches all over Africa, when the leader is not in town, People don't go to church and the church goes down. Not here because this place, it is not about personalities. It's about the word of God and it's about who has the word of God to preach and feed the people of God. Say yes. From where you are, from where you are. Not from somewhere else. And whatever you need to make it to heaven and to make it in life is in this house. Everything you need is here where you are. Lift up your eyes from where thou art. From where you are. Right here. Look at someone and say, everything is here. Everything is here. And give somebody a high five and say, and things are getting better. And things are getting better. Things are getting better. Go ahead. Look from the place where thou art northward and uh -huh. southward and eastward and, uh -huh. and westward. Uh -huh. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it. Another translation said, he said, as far as your eyes can see, have I given unto you. 
Look at someone and say, as far as, as far as, as far as you can see, as far as you can see. You know, I was saying at the first service that when we moved here 25 years ago, from shop right, right down to Sakumono Junction, the only buildings that were there was when we started here and the Bank of Ghana Warehouse, Spintex, that uh, factory, and one or two factories, that was it. There was nothing here. And in those days, they offered me an acre of land on the Spintex Road here for $10, and I was not interested. And we had money at those days. I could have bought, bought acres of land. And I was very upset that they were offering me lands in those areas because I was saying that even this place where I am, it's so far from town. And I've lost a lot of people because when we left airport and uh, trade fair to come here, a lot of our members wouldn't come because this place was literally out of town. And they went to other churches. And I was upset about that. Now you, are, you want to take me right into the jungles on the spring test road there when even this place, I'm struggling with it. I didn't see what is there today. And you see East Legon. They offered me one plot of land, five dollars in those days. I wasn't interested. Somebody see the veil. Why? Because the veil was blocking my ability to see and my view. Go ahead, I'll show you something. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. Uh -huh. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Uh -huh. Arise. Walk through the land in the length of it uh -huh. and in the breadth of it, uh -huh. for I will give it unto thee. Now God said, God said, walk. He said, arise. You see, you can't possess anything until you arise. And you can't arise and you can't walk when you don't see. And you can't confront that which you don't see. And if you don't confront, you can't conquer. You can only conquer that which you confront. And you can only confront that which you see. And here was Abraham. God refused to speak to Abraham all along for many years. And the reason why God won't speak is because God does not waste his time trying to get you to hear when you don't see what he's about to say. I'll prove it to you. And there are so many people, I tell some people, you know what? I don't like talking to them. I will not talk to you until the veil is lifted. Because until the veil is destroyed and the veil is removed, you are wasting your time. And God said, I am not going to speak to Abraham. It's waste of my time, waste of my energy. And I don't have time speaking and talking when he cannot see. But the Bible said, and as soon as Lot, which was the veil, was separated or removed from Abraham, then the voice of Elohim echoed from eternity to time and said, now... Abraham, my son, now lift up your eyes from where you have always been and see what has always been there and has always been in stock for you. See it now. It's always been there. But you couldn't see because Lord's assignment in your life was to block your view. And the word walk, the length and the breadth of it means manifest it. Become it. Become what you are seeing. Live what you are seeing. Be a reflection of what you are seeing. That means walk the length. Of, that means become what you are seeing. Are you hearing me, somebody? The problem we all have is the veil. A man traveled from California, sold his property, all the way to South Africa in search of gold. Years after, he went back to California and saw the property he owned that he sold, acres of land. They have just discovered gold on his land. And he sold it for penny, pennies, and went to South Africa in search of gold. And the very land that he sold, there was gold on it. And the very thing he needed was on the very land he sold. When God promised Israel, the promise was not just about the promised land, Canaan. It had to do with lands all over the place which the Arabs today has possessed, including the river Euphrates and far above the river Euphrates. And he said, as far as your eyes can see, beyond the river Euphrates have I given unto you. You know what the problem of the Jews were? 
they were looking at the land flowing with milk and honey and they walked past the other lands that God promised them and little did they know that they were walking on oil that underneath the land they were walking there was oil underneath it and they were looking at the land flowing with milk and honey and they bypassed those other land didn't put a claim on it years and generations after the seed of Ishmael that dwell in the places they weren't interested in found oil in the desert. Tell somebody, the land you are walking on, there is something underneath it. There is something underneath it. Jesus put it this way, eyes have they, but they see not. Your greatest problem is the veil. Until the veil is removed, you will never know what the future has in stock for you. Until the veil is removed, you will sit in this house with all the blessings in this house and yet be deprived and be denied and not play the role you should play in this house to be able to come into your inheritance because you don't see. You'll be distracted and be deceived to be looking all over the place and think that there's somewhere better than here when everything you need is here because the veil is blocking your ability to see. Bishop Oedipo said something that was very interesting and I've been hearing it for some time now. I was talking to Pastor Paul. Some of the young pastors were telling me even after the first service, people perception about this place. Oedipo said for many years his church came to a point and it wasn't growing. And he taught and preached and did everything. Organized, did everything. The church wasn't growing. And one time they were fasting and praying. He was walking on the premises and the Lord said, David, lift up your eyes. And he saw this dark cloud positioned somewhere over the building. And the Lord said, this is what is misrepresenting what I am doing in the church. Deal with it. So he cast it. And the thing lifted. The church began to explode. Big time. And the new people who started coming and joining the church, this was what they were saying. They used to drive on that same road on his church to go to other churches and said that any time they were passing by, what they saw was a white garment church. He said that they saw a white garment church. That was what they saw. Do you know how uh, people see this place? I mean, I mean, I was amazed to hear some of the things. Some people think we sell cars here. They said it's a car garage or something. There's a lot of cars all over. They are selling cars here. Some people also said that this place is a company. I mean, all kinds of perception. And I said, so all the cross and all the church activities and everything we are doing here, they still, and with my name on the motorway and everything, Archbishop. So Archbishop is doing company. It's an Archbishop company going on here. And you know what it is? It's the veil. Somebody said the veil, the veil. As long as the veil is there, people will not see. And the veil misrepresents who you are. The veil misrepresents the truth to you. And the veil blocks your ability to see the truth. The veil desensitizes your sensitivity. And the veil misguides and misleads you. And causes you to cause and to make wrong choices and decisions. Come with me. Let me show you a scripture. Let's begin our journey. Come with me to Genesis chapter 29. Reading from verse 21 to 28. Genesis. 29, 21 to 28. And Jacob said unto Laban, uh -huh. Give me my wife, uh -huh. for my days are fulfilled, uh -huh. that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place mm -hmm. and made a feast. Uh -huh. And it came to pass in the evening that now, he took... Now, now, underline that word, if another translation says, and at night or in the dark. That word evening stands for time where there was no illumination or there wasn't, there wasn't enough light. Evening. He married in the evening. One translation said in the dark. Another said in the night. But this one said evening, which all has to do with in the dark. He married in the dark. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the evening that he uh -huh. took Leah, his daughter, uh -huh. and brought her to him. Uh -huh. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, uh -huh. his maid for an unmaid. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold. Underline the word in the morning, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Morning stands for light. 
it also stands for illumination or enlightenment. Say illumination. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Say illumination. Talk to me, somebody, talk to me. Talk, talk to me, say illumination. illumination. Say enlightenment. Say light. Use the word, say light, light, light. That's what morning stands for. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the morning, that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. Uh -huh. And he said unto Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? Uh -huh. Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Mm -hmm. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Mm -hmm. And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country mm -hmm. to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Now I want you to look at me. I want you to look at me. This veil eh, is a very serious thing. I'm telling you. I've been looking at it very, very, very deeply. And I realized that most of the errors and the challenges we face, preachers, men of God, government, politicians, is the veil. That until the veil is destroyed, we will keep on walking and living in error. And as long as the veil is there, eh, hear me, your miracle will always be overdue, number one. Number two, your blessing will be prolonged and the miracle will even be deferred. Now here was Jacob. The first time Jacob saw Rachel, he knew that this was the love of his life and what he wanted. And his father-in-law said, you have to work seven years to get her. And for seven years, he worked and labored for Rachel. When the seven years was up and it was time for him to have Rachel, the father-in-law switched it. Somebody say switch. Uh -huh. There are some of you seated here. Your destiny and your future has been compromised in many ways because of the veil. Now Jacob went into Egypt and he crossed his hand over Ephraim and Manasseh and reversed and overruled and overturned the birth right and gave the blessing of the firstborn to the youngest took it from Manasseh and gave it to Ephraim. And when he laid hands on Ephraim, he was blessing Joshua because Joshua came from the tribe of Ephraim. But let us leave that for another day. Let's move on to the veil. Jacob had worked seven years for Rachel. The night of the wedding, they married in the night in those days. They didn't have light or standby generator. And in the night of the wedding, he worked for Rachel. He did everything. Engagement, dowry, everything for Rachel. They went into the room to prepare Rachel. And what they brought was not Rachel. And he couldn't see what he was marrying because they had covered her face with a dark veil. When you watch the telly most time, the Muslims from Middle East, you see them all wearing this dark veil, dark veil. They've covered the face of whoever he was marrying with a dark veil. So he didn't see what he was marrying. And can you imagine that night? In the tent, Rachel, there's a, mm, mm, Rachel, mm, 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 who speak? Why? Because it was not Rachel. And the Bible said, and in the morning, when the light appeared, now why are you looking at me that way? What's wrong with all of you? Hallelujah. I'm talking about serious matters here. Amen. Then when the light came in the morning, he saw that it was not Rachel. And he screamed and went to the father-in-law and said, why have you done this to me? I worked for Rachel and not for Leah. Why did you switch it? And the father-in-law said, I'm sorry, but it's already done. You are stuck with it. And in order for you to get what you've always believed for and wanted, it will take you another seven years. Tell somebody, your miracle is long overdue. I can't hear you. Tell somebody, your blessing is long overdue. The reason why you haven't come into it is because you can't see the veil. The veil. Somebody see the veil. The veil was the reason why Jacob ended up with Leah. Now, Jacob wanted one woman, but he ended up with four. Four. For one because of the veil you check the scriptures you see in those days when a daughter marries parents will always give her a maid to support her 
So when Leah married, she couldn't have a child. She was barren. And the father gave her a maid. So the maid had to sleep with Jacob to produce kids for the madam. Same thing when Rachel came on the scene. And the fact that he didn't see and didn't know what he was sleeping with. Look at somebody and say, do you know what you are sleeping with? I didn't see anything. I just asked you a question. So don't say Papa said. I didn't say nothing. I just asked you a question. Now, I want you to look at me. Say to somebody, you cannot confront that which you don't see. So now, if that is true, what do you think would have happened if Jacob had seen that it was Leah? Before he said, I do, what do you think he would have done? Come on, talk to me. What do you think he would have done? Do you know why some of you are not bold and courageous to confront some things and to deal with some things? It's because you don't see. And the reason why some of you live with things you, you don't live with, coexist with things you don't, you don't have to coexist with, accept things you don't have to accept, is because of the veil. The veil. Somebody say the veil. Come with me to Isaiah 25 and verse 7. Isaiah 25 and verse 7, quickly. And he will destroy in this mouth the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. The veil that is spread over all nations. I want you to look at me. How come Africa has all the resources we have and have all the kinds of gifting politicians, gifted politicians, well-educated politicians like we have in this continent and yet this continent is not moving. There is a veil that is cast over nations. So that the nations and people in authority and people who are in the positions of authority who can make change and effect change and bring about a, a turnaround and a sense of direction will not do what they're supposed to do because the veil prevents them from seeing in order to do something about it. The veil. Come to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world. Mm, go ahead. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, the God of this world has done what? Blinded. That word blinded means is to blindfold them. A veil has been cast at them. Now I want you to look at me. Stop, stop screaming at people. Stop trying to get people converted. I'm telling you. Unless you deal with the veil, you can talk as much as you want to, they won't listen. And the reason why they are not listening is not because they don't want to, it's because they can't see what you are saying. And that's why God won't say anything to Abraham until Lot departed. Because if God has said anything before Lot departed, Abraham wouldn't have seen it. He wouldn't have accepted it. And that's why God waited and created a situation for Lot and Abraham to go their separate way. When the separation took place, then God said, Now, lift up your eyes from where you have always been and look all around you. And he said, As far as your eyes can see, have I given unto you. Seeing is possession. Look at somebody and say, What seest thou? And to somebody else, say to them, What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Because if you don't see anything, you are not going anywhere. Until you see it, you can't have it. Come with me to Genesis 38. Genesis 38. Reading from verse 13 to 19. Genesis 38. 13 to 19. And it was told Thomas, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear her sh his sheep. Uh -huh. And she put her widow's garments off from her. And covered her with a veil. Covered her with a veil. She covered herself with a veil. Now you all know the history here with this lady. He had married two of the sons of Judah. And, and two of them died. God smote the two of them. Now it, the father-in-law had an issue. He had three sons. Two was dead. And all the two had married the same woman and died. 
And so he didn't want to lose the third born. So send her away and refused to give the third one to her. And when the third one had come of age and she saw that the father-in-law refused to give the third one to her, she decided to snare and to set the father-in-law up. And the only way she could do it was to put a veil on her. Look at what she did. She covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, uh -huh. which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shelah was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. You see, the veil misrepresents the truth to you. The veil makes you see wrongly. Mm -hmm. When he saw her, because he had covered her face with a veil, mm -hmm. she thought her to be a harlot when she was the daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. And she knew it, but he didn't know it. As long as the veil is there, people will manipulate and exploit you. As long as the veil is there, the enemy has an advantage. But I declare in the name of Jesus. Yes. I said I declare in the name of Jesus that the veil is about to be lifted. The veil is about to be destroyed. That you will see as you ought to see. Say yes. yes. Now look at the implication. Of his, uh, his inability to see the veil. I want you to look at me. This veil thing eh, is very serious. I've had a lot of pastors in this church. Over the years. Who were going to marry. And I warned them and I said don't marry that girl. And even some sisters I said don't marry him. He's not correct. And they'll go and say papa said you are not correct. I shouldn't marry you. And the women will come to me and I said yes I said it. You are not correct and you know it. And they will marry. And years after, it will come out that what Papa said was true. And the reason why they couldn't see what I was saying was because the veil had covered them. And as long as the veil is there, it doesn't matter what you say. As long as they can see it, they will not respond. I'm telling you. And I'll prove it to you. It's not just hearing, you got to see. Go ahead. Look at the implications that took place. He thought her to be unhallowed because she had covered her face. Uh -huh. And he turned unto her by the way and said, uh -huh. Go to, I pray thee, uh -huh. let me come in unto thee. Uh -huh. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. The, the Bible always have a way of tampering things very, very graciously. But go in, he said, let me have sex with you. That is the thing. Don't look at me that way. As if you are an angel. He was talking about sex. I know a lot of you are looking at me some ways. He, he, he was talking about sex. Not going, going where? Sex. <laughs> Go ahead. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Uh -huh. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? Look, and it now, now, now listen to what she wanted. Though. This woman was no joke. Though. She had lived with them. And she knew exactly what to ask for. And she knew what she was dealing with. And who Judah represented. Because if you look at the pronouncement of Jacob. The patriarch of Israel. And when he began to pronounce the inheritance. And to whom will different inheritance belong to to the line of of judah was given the scepter of kingship and that the scepter of kingship shall not depart from judah until yeshua hamashiach comes and a prince to raise up a prince for the bloodline was given to levi to another bloodline but for a king was given to judah so he knew what she was asking for. Now look at the thing she asked for. Go ahead. And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? Uh -huh. And she said, Thy signet. Your signet. Your, your ring. Your signature. I want your signature. Mm. Do you know what it means to give somebody your signature? Like Jezebel used the seal of Ahab to write letters to kill. That's how powerful the seal of a king is. And this was a king maker. The father of the kings. 
that are to come to Israel. And the reason why Saul, the Saul came to the throne, who was from the tribe of Benjamin and not from the tribe of Judah, but became king over Israel, who was a substitute and he was, should have never been king over Israel, was because of this act. Because if you study, I'll show it to you on Wednesday. If you study the scriptures carefully, you realize that because of this one act, which was an act of incest, the agenda, the mandate, the assignment of the tribe of Judah was deferred for 10 generations. I'm telling you. Their wealth, their blessing was deferred for 10 generations. I'll show it to you on Wednesday. Very scary. And she asked for, go ahead, signet. Thy signet. Signature. Thy bracelet. Bracelet, riches, wealth. Go ahead. And thy staff. That is your in your staff. Heart. Your staff. The sign of authority, the throne, and the rulership. Give them all to me for sex. And he gave it to her. And she gave it to her. And came in unto her. And she conceived by him. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. I'll stop here for now. Wednesday we are declaring a fast. The purpose of the fast is to destroy the veil. Because there are many, many veils in life. Financial veil, marital veil. Some of you, your children, future. Your children are covered with the veil. The reason why people can sit in the church blessed like this and yet do nothing and not be involved in anything and not help and not do what is required of them is all the veil. Because if it's not a veil, it doesn't make sense. With all the preaching you hear in this house and yet you look at people's attitude and you ask, who are these and where did they come from? And it's because of the veil. Until the veil is removed, it's always going to be that way. And it's the same thing with your children. You talk and say, what should I do? What have I done? How come you don't hear? And you talk and talk and your children are not hearing. Husband is not hearing. Wife is not hearing. Until you stop talking and deal with the veil, it will always be that way. What is a veil? They cast a spell on you. It's a spell. Now sit up well. Look at someone and say, sit up well. Lift up your hand. Pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. Everybody lift up both of your hands. Talk to God for a minute. Shatakahayas. You brethren, build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. De Kasuta. I command the veil to be lifted. I command the veil to be bent by fire. I call for fire. I invoke fire from the oven of heaven to destroy the veil over this house and the people in this house. In the name of Jesus, let the veil be destroyed. Now, look at me. What do you think Judah would have done if the veil was removed and he saw that it was the mother-in-law? Uh, the daughter-in-law. Come on, talk to me. What do you think he would have done if the veil was removed and he saw that it was the daughter-in-law? He would have what? He would have rejected it, confronted it. And the fire in his bosom to have sex would have died. It would have been quenched immediately. But he didn't know what he was sleeping with. He was entering the same hole two of his sons had entered. Why you look at me with that look? Look at someone and say, why have you made your face that way? What is wrong with you? Now, come with me to Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 10 to 12. Let me show you something. Jeremiah 1, 10 to 12. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms uh -huh. to root out and to pull no, no, down. No, 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 no. The first thing he said was what? Here. See. He said, no, no. He says, here. By what? See. By what? See. What is the word see? The word see here means touch it. Get it. Comprehend it apprehend it visualize it digest it take hold of it he said see what I have done I've said it this day over nations and over kingdoms to root out to pull down to 
destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. I want you to hear me. I want you to look at me. The first thing he said here was what? Now hear me. You know why God said see? He said, Jeremiah, if you don't see what I have done and what I'm telling you, you can never possess it. You know what the problem with some of you is? You hear, but you don't see what you are hearing. And until you see what you are hearing, you will not step up and rise to the dimension you should be in. You know, I was in Orlando last week. I declared a fast, seven days fast in Orlando. In a church that I used to cover when I lived there, a great man of God. He used to be on TBN and all these networks. Zachary Tim. I brought him to Ghana here some years ago. He just died a few weeks ago. 42 years old. Just died like that in his hotel room. And uh, I went in there and had to declare fast to work with the leadership and the board and all that. And one of the things that they said, they said, they said, Archbishop, we hear you have a lot of bishops and pastors very strong in the spirit. Is there anyone you can recommend to come and help this church? And when I looked around, the people who are in the position to do that, I mean, Bishop James definitely, but no, he won't go, he doesn't want to go stay in America. I don't want to go do that. I've been in America for eight years. I started thinking, Johnson Chakonu, 